Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can make a simple collectible system such as picking up coins and counting how many coins we have left. So let's get started. So in this scene, as you can see, I have a player, I have a background object for our sky, I have a main camera, and then I have a grid tile map, which is just a lovely grass pixel art tile set, which can be found in the description. So what we essentially want to do here is make an object that the player can pick up and spawn multiple of this object. And as the player goes around picking up each one, this object disappears and is added to the player's overall collectible count. We can then manipulate this variable and expose it to UI or use it to unlock a door or something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have this coin anim texture here. And what this is, is just a collection of frames, which is just going to show a coin rotating. Now you can just have a static image. If you don't want to do an animation, it's completely up to you. But if you do, then you may want to use similar settings to mine. Of course, keep in mind i am using pixel art so some settings such as the filter mode will be different so i have my sprite mode set to multiple and then i've gone into my sprite editor and i've just split these images using the grid by cell size slicing tool now i'm just going to select the first one shift select the last one and just drag this into the hierarchy here it's going to ask me to save so i'm just going to save this as coin anim and you can see I have that right there. So I can just drag this down a little bit, zoom in on it. And if I go to this animation tab here, which if you don't have, you can go to window, animation, animation tab. And then if I press play here, you can see that my coin very slowly rotates. Now I can change the speed of this rotation with this sample size. I could change this to 24 and it could go a little bit quicker. But for now, I'm going to keep it at 12. So now testing this in game, I can run up to this coin. You can see it's rotating nice and smoothly, but obviously we've done nothing else to this coin. So currently we have no coin counter, no collision or practically anything. So first things first, let's go to our coin and just rename this coin or whatever you're using for your collectible. I'm then going to press add component and type in circle collider. Again, you can use a box collider if you wish, but of course a circle collider works for the objects I'm using. I am going to scale this down just a little bit. So I'm going to hit edit collider and shorten the radius by holding alt. We're going to check for this coin using tags. So I'm going to give this coin a tag. So let's go to tag, add tag, and then feel free to call it whatever you want to call your collectible. Now I've already made a tag and called it coin. So I'm just gonna select that. And now right here, we officially have a coin. But of course, I don't wanna just have one coin. So because we wanna use multiple of these and you may want to use these in different scenes, I'm gonna drag this coin into our project folder, meaning we've made it a prefab. And now I can drag this anywhere I like and just move it around. And this works great. We've got a bunch of coins scattered around our level. And now what's great about this is we can make changes to this coin and it will affect all of the coins we have in our level. So what we want to do is have our collider set to a trigger. And as you can see right now, this is not the case. So we can go to our prefab here, double click on it to open it up and just select is trigger and save that back out of this menu. And now we can check any of these coins and you can see we have is trigger enabled. And that's one really effective benefit of using prefabs. So now that we've officially set up a coin, it's time to delve into some scripts. So we're going to be handling our coins and the current status of them from a game manager game object. So let's right click in the hierarchy, press create empty and just type in game manager. Now on this component, I'm just going to type in coin manager, new script, create an ad. And now we can open this up in Visual Studio. So for now, this is going to be a super simple script as all we're going to do is have a public integer and we're going to call this coin count. And now we have this, we can reference and adjust this integer from other scripts. So now you have a choice as to whether you want your player to have a separate script for checking for coin collision, or you can do it inside an existing script such as your player move. So for me, I'm gonna do it in my movement script that I already have on the player. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this for yours too. So I'm gonna select my player move scripts and open this up. And you can see it has some functionality for moving and jumping and things like that. So I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom. We need to use a new function called void on trigger enter. Void on trigger enter 2D change this collision to other. We can also get rid of the private here. See, one thing that might be interesting to note is that we do have on collision enter and on collision exit functions here, but we don't want to use those because they currently wouldn't work on our coins because our coins are set to have trigger to true. And these are used if we have our is trigger set to false. So with this new function down here, we can just check if other.gameobjects.compare tag is equal to coin with a capital C like we put it in the editor. So what we're checking for here is we're checking for any object that has a collider with trigger set to true, which we can reference as other inside this function. So we're checking if this other object we have just collided with has a tag of coin, then what we want to do is access our coin manager scripts and add one to this coin count. So we need to create a reference to this coin manager. So let's go to the top of our script, whether you do this in a brand new one or in a script you currently have on your player. And I'm just going to do public coin manager and I'm just going to call this CM for coin manager. Now, again, we could reference this in our start function by applying a tag to our game manager object. But for now, I'm just going to reference this in the editor. So with our new coin manager variable, let's scroll back down and do CM dot coin count. So this is us referencing this integer right here. So to add one, there's a very simple way we could do this to integers. We can just do plus plus semicolon. 
And if you wanted to take away one, you could just do minus minus semicolon. So now back in the editor, we can check this game manager object and see we now have this coin count set to zero. But before we test this out, let's go to our player and let's drag in this game manager object into our coin manager slot here. And now I'm gonna test this out with the game manager selected. And you can see as I walk into these coins, you can see our coin count increases by one every time. However, you may be noticing the slight issue here is that we can rack up a pretty high count, which for me personally is not the intention. So what we need to do is access the coin we've just collided with and essentially take it out of the game. So we can do this very simply. Just before we add one to our coin count, let's do destroy and then we can just add in that other dot game object. So what we're doing is accessing the game object we've just collided with and destroying it. And you can see very quickly, this fixes our issue. So not only do we have a coin count, we now have coins that actually disappear from the game as they should. So now that's great for us in the editor as we can check how many coins we have. But in game, a player would have no idea. So let's create some UI to present this information. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna right click in our hierarchy, go to UI and then go to text and it will automatically create a canvas for us as well as an event system, but we don't need to worry about this. So let's go to our text and press F to focus in on it. And you can see we have this giant box, which is representing our canvas. And then we have a tiny little text object here. So we're gonna tweak these settings just so we can see it a little bit better. We can change this text to coin count. What we put here doesn't matter because we're gonna be adjusting it in script anyway. So I'm resizing this a little bit and then I'm gonna just align it into the middle of this box. I can then resize it just a little bit more. And then finally, I'm just gonna move this from the bottom left to the top left of our canvas. I'm gonna press this icon in our transform component and then hold alt and press top left. This will anchor it to the top left of our canvas. Finally, let's go back to our canvas, set our UI scale mode to scale with screen size, which just ensures that if your players are on different screen sizes, the UI will remain consistent. This might alter your text slightly, so feel free to adjust it in response. And now if we check our game view, you can see we have a very simple coin count here. So now we're gonna make a reference to this UI object. So we need to add a new namespace. So we're gonna do using unity engine.ui. And then let's create a reference to it. So we can just do public text coin text. So again, we're gonna reference this in the inspector. So now we can very simply go to our update function and set our coin text object dot text. So we're referencing the text component of our object. We're gonna set this to our coin count integer and then we have to add dot to string. And now the reason we add this is because what we're referencing here is a text game object. And what this is, is an integer. So if we didn't have this, we'd get an error. We're trying to pass a number into a text object. So we need to convert it into something the text object can read, which is of course a string. So now before we test this, we need to reference our text object in our game manager. So let's select our game manager and drag our text object right into this slot here. And now we can test this out. And you can see right now we just have a zero. And if I move into this coin, it changes to one. And then the more coins we get, it goes up just a little bit more. And so it doesn't just say a number, we can actually pass in a string here. So we can use quotations and we can just type in coin count colon. And then we can put a space here and then we can combine this string with our coin count using a plus sign here. But before we test this, make sure that your text object is big enough. Because right now, if we were to test this out, it would just say coin count and the number would not actually fit in as it is outside the text box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this out here. And instead of having our text in the middle, I'm gonna use alignment to set it to the left. And now we can test this out and you can see it says zero and it will add up as we go along. But now we have this coin count text as well. So one thing I wanna show you next is how we can use this coin count to activate certain events in our game, such as opening a door when we have a certain amount of coins. So what I'm gonna do here, just as a placeholder, I'm gonna right click on the hierarchy, press 2D object, sprite square. We can just call this door and we can change the sprite from square to a sprite of your choice to represent a door. I am gonna use this sprite here and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag it over here. And they're gonna slightly resize this just to represent a door asset. And finally, let's give it a box collider 2D. This simply means we cannot go through this door. It's preventing us from getting to the other side here, which could, for example, have a special power up or the end of your level. So what we wanna do is check for a certain number of coins. And when we reach that number, disable this door. And we can do that very simply. We can go to our script here and we can get a reference to our door. So we can just do public game object door. And then in our update function, we can check if coin count is equal to six and I'm using the number six because that is how many coins I've placed in this level. You can set this to whatever you want. Then we can just do destroy door. Alternatively, you could just disable the box collider. So now if I test this and collect every coin, you can see when I click this last one, the door does in fact disappear and I can run straight through with no box collider stopping us. Now, if you're doing something like this on a larger scale, you may be worrying about performance issues as this is being triggered every frame, even though we don't actually have a door to destroy. So you may wanna add in a Boolean. We could do private ball door destroyed and check for this as well as our coin count being six. So we can just do and door destroyed is false. And then the first thing we do is set door destroyed equal to true. This means this will only run once. 
So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this look just a little bit better because currently this isn't the best looking thing. So instead of having a text object here, I'm going to have a coin sprite and then a number next to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on our canvas, go to UI and then image. I'm just going to call this coin UI. We can do what we did before, select this, hold alt, select the top left. And now I'm going to use one of the coin sprites I used before. I can just use the first frame of my animation. Then I can grab our text object, use a placeholder text such as one, just so we can see where it is. Then I'm going to realign this to the center, press T so I can resize, hold alt as I drag. And finally, I can just move this over. And that looks about right for us. But now, of course, we do have to adjust this in the script. So instead of having coin count, we can simply remove this and just keep the colon in there with the space. And you can see now we have a sprite for a coin and then we have a little colon and a number and it will go up over time. Now, of course, this can be customized massively to make this look way better than this. This was simply made in 10 minutes, but hopefully this shows you guys the basics of what we can do. I've got more videos coming on this topic of how we can collect keys and have keys open specific doors. But if you do have any other kind of tutorials you want to see, I have a Google form down in the description below where you can request a tutorial. Other than that, guys, I also have a Patreon with scripts from these videos if you want to see those. But apart from that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's been a while since my last one, but hopefully I'm back now to create in more tutorials and I've got some very cool content coming to the main channel. So check that out in the description also. Guys, I will thank you all very much for watching today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.